on your side with breaking news and the Tri-State's most accurate forecast. This is 9 News at 6. Good evening. What could Cincinnati do with another $20 million? How about as much as $48 million? The city and Metro used that tax money to construct a half-mile-long underground transit center along the riverfront, one that years later is rarely, if ever, used by public transit. 9 News anchor Brendan Keefe has tonight's I-Team investigation. Brendan? Clyde, the government essentially buried tens of millions of dollars under 2nd Street, a hidden treasure that few Cincinnatians have ever seen. It's a massive transit station completely disconnected from any transit system. We discovered eight years after it opened, the Riverfront Transit Center is attracting more rust than riders. The future has arrived. The trains and buses have not. Eight years after it opened, this is Cincinnati's ghost station. Brightly lit entrances suggest the city has a working subway. Could this be the B train? No, it's an empty stairwell leading to an empty station. There are no rails, no buses, no scheduled service of any kind. Just a half mile of concrete, subway tile, and mosaic artwork. Few people know even exists. The only reason that there's not more outrage about it, and this is the only reason, is because people don't know what's there. Charlie Lucan was Cincinnati's mayor in 2003 when the Riverfront Transit Center opened. One, two, three. At the ribbon cutting, Mayor Lucan praised the $48 million public facility conceived before he took office. It will be used by charter buses, public transit, school buses and shuttles for many years to come. Years to come. Years to come. Years to come. Well, we're eight years out and nothing's happened. And for the foreseeable future, nothing's happened. So we are perfectly safe in saying that this was a waste of money. Second Street is actually the roof for the massive transit center hidden below. It's unimaginably large. That dot is a security guard, and this is just half the eight block length. The 85 foot wide, two story high facility runs for a half mile between the football and baseball stadiums. We can use the Bengals gridiron to measure its length. That's eight football fields. The transit center is open only for home games and only for private charter buses. The other 275 days a year, the doors are locked. I try to get in it probably 30 times a year just out of curiosity, and you can't. How do you lock down a half-mile transit center that's completely empty three-quarters of the year with very big gates? Metro authorized spending $45,000 to seal off both ends, locking out everyone, including you, the taxpayers who funded its construction. Who paid for these giant gates? Again, you did with a Homeland Security grant. It's designed to take light rail and future transportation in the future, so. That's what engineers said when the transit center was under construction, along with the Fort Washington Way project. There was talk and even a referendum for commuter rail. So instead of putting 2nd Street on top of a levee or berm, the city and Metro teamed up to build a station underneath using state and federal tax money. If we had not done the Riverfront Transit Center when we did during the Fort Washington Way construction, it may have been physically impossible to fit in a transit facility of any size or financially prohibitive to do that in the future. Sally Hilvers is and was the Metro spokesperson. She says the reason you see buses driving on top of the transit center instead of inside it is that development of the riverfront itself has taken longer than expected. The purpose was for a completely developed riverfront. We're just not there yet. Planners had predicted by 2010 an estimated 375,000 passengers a year would use the transit center. This four-year-old pictured at the ribbon cutting in a Cincinnati Post article is now 12 years old, and there's still no bus or train for him to catch. It's a shame, and uh, Metro and the other people who are responsible for it ought to just say so 
And I think people would respect the honesty, but to continue to, to imply that this is somehow connected to some grandiose future plan for regional transportation is just plain silly. Museum officials estimated 60,000 school kids will use the transit center to visit the Freedom Center in its first year alone on school buses. There's even a dedicated entrance from the transit center. It may be called the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center, but buses stop above ground on 2nd Street. The brick sidewalks above the transit center have been torn up for one project or another over the last eight years. Other spots are beginning to show their age. The bricks are sagging in some places, with weeds pushing their way up through the cracks. Even though it has been mostly unused since 2003, the aging multi-million dollar transit center is in need of repairs. Signs are beginning to crack and peel, and rust is forming over the street level entrances. It's going to deteriorate, and then you're going to have to spend more government money trying to fix the thing up. Metro says no. It's actually making money on the approach aprons that were supposed to handle 500 buses an hour. Instead, they've been leased out to a private parking lot operator. All repairs, including a $115,000 structural analysis of the leaky 2nd Street roof, have been funded by parking revenue, not tax dollars. But that doesn't count the nearly $50 million spent to build the facility. And that future rail it was built to handle? The controversial streetcar project would stop three blocks from the existing transit center. And even the expanded plan had the streetcar making a short loop on top of 2nd Street, never entering this empty station under the roadway. They were being told this was going to be a centerpiece of a regional transportation system. And frankly, that never happened, and it's not likely to happen anytime in my life. There's no getting the money back. Whether you focus on Metro's figure of 18 to 23 million dollars for the walls and floor, or the 48 million dollar price tag for the entire project, including the roof that holds up Second Street above, tens of millions in taxpayer money was spent nearly a decade ago. That train has already left the station. Now the city has a half mile long empty concrete tube along the riverfront, an out of sight project that may still live up to its original promise someday in the distant future. Clyde? And there's the rub, Brendan. There is no getting that money back. Thanks. Eight years